Hey everyone, Bronco37 here, working on the GL1000 motor and here today to talk to you guys a little bit about how to adjust your valves. Now when we talk about doing our valve adjustment on this bike, um, we're always supposed to start at top dead center of the compression stroke of cylinder number one. So currently we're on top dead center, you see the T1. And I've been working on this bike and I did the, the, the videos for the timing belts and all that. So currently I've got these covers off. And so I can tell by knowing that my up, my up, and my up over here, and I'm on top dead center, I know that I'm on the compression stroke for cylinder number one. Now, when you go to adjust the valves, you're not necessarily going to have these front covers off. You can just remove your valve cover and simply make your adjustment to your tappets here. So how can you tell if these are on the up? Well, the book tells you to make sure that you're on top dead center for number one, and in order to do that, put the, the rotate the crank so it's on top dead center, number one. Um, and then we want to make sure that we're on the compression stroke, not the exhaust stroke. Now, if you're on the compression stroke, um, both the intake and the exhaust valve rockers will move because both of these valves are fully closed. At this point in time, when the motor's running, the piston is all the way up at the top of its stroke and the spark plug is firing, exploding the gases, giving it the power stroke to shoot the piston back down and then repeat. Um, so when that happens, both of these are going to move and you can hear and see, and I'll show you here, listen, hear that? That's this, tap it adjustment rattling because there's a little bit of clearance between this adjuster and the tip of this valve stem right here okay down here on the exhaust side same thing okay so both of those are wiggling around so that means that i am on the top dead center of the uh compression stroke remember your uppers right here the two on top are your intake and the two on the bottom are the exhaust and it's the same way for both sides pretty easy to remember since your exhaust comes out the bottom these are on the bottom your gas goes in the top these are on the top so that's pretty easy to keep straight forward let me show you what would happen if we were not on the compression stroke for cylinder number one okay so let's suppose again that I've got the top dead center for number one I've got all my timing marks lined up um, but the motor would be in the bike. These would be covered up So I wouldn't be able to tell if my marks here were up or not So the book will tell you to wiggle again both of these and let's see what happens now The first time we were on top dead center of the compression stroke for number one And both of these wiggled because both of those valves were closed Which makes sense because you would want both of those valves closed to maintain your compression for that large explosion that's going on inside of the motor. So right now, when I do this, hear that? Just like last time, nothing, okay? Because there's a little bit of spring pressure on here. Down here, also nothing, okay? So um, both of these have a little bit of spring pressure on them, so we are not on the top dead center of the compression stroke. So when that happens, all you want to do is we want to turn the motor 360 degrees. So again, we're going to rotate the crank. And because remember, it takes two revolutions of the crankshaft to rotate the, the camshaft one time. So to get onto the compression stroke, I simply take this and I'm going to rotate it around one full revolution. And you can see there's number two. Number one should be coming up here pretty quick. There's some timing marks. There's our F. We're going to line the T up there. So that's all good. So we went one full revolution around. And then if we come back over here and check this again, just like we had the first time, we've got that. And we've got that. And now you wouldn't be able to necessarily see these because the covers would be on. But that means that, again, you're up and you're up and you're up. Your timing marks are all lined up, and so you're on the compression stroke for cylinder number one. At this point, you can go ahead and begin your valve adjustment.
Now, everything that I just explained to you about how to find the top dead center of the compression stroke is right here in the manual. I'm working out of a climber manual here. Um, and so I have this um, for when I'm doing the timing belts. I put on here start. And the instructions for what I just told you are all right here. And it tells you what to do. Wiggle the tappets. See if they're moving around. And then basically, once you get on the top dead center for number one, and we know that we're on the compression stroke, we're simply going to follow this table. Okay? So this says for cylinder number one, right now on the compression stroke where we start with cylinder number one, we're going to make all the adjustments for these that are labeled A. Okay? And you can see that there are four of them that are labeled A. So then, after we make all those adjustments, we'll rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees, and then we'll make all the adjustments for B. Basically, when you rotate it 360 degrees, um, that puts it on top dead center of the compression stroke for cylinder number two. Okay, so we're going to go around and we're going to make all of these adjustments. In my opinion, the hardest part about doing the valve adjustment is actually determining where you are in the relationship between the rotation of the camshaft to the rotation of the crankshaft to try to determine if you're actually on a on a firing stroke or if you're on an exhaust stroke top dead center all those types of things so i'm, I'm really hoping that the first part of this video um, really sorted that for everybody now once once we've determined we're on top dead center number one we've got some wiggle on both of these. To make the adjustment is actually very, very simple. You need three basic tools. You need a flat tip screwdriver. Um, you need a 10 millimeter wrench and you need a four thousandths clearance, um, a four thousandths feeler gauge here to be able to actually gauge the clearance. Now, uh, don't get real caught up in the four thousandths clearance number, okay? All that is, is ensuring that as this motor is turning around, we want to make sure that there's enough room between this part right here, which is called the tappet. This is the rocker. Okay. So the end of this tappet is going to contact the end of the valve stem right here. Okay. So we want to make sure that there is enough space between these two components at the right time so that when this closes, it can fully close and this is not going to keep it from closing all the way. Also, we want to make sure that there's not too much space between the end of the tappet and the end of the valve so that we end up losing some lift, okay? And what that is, that's the amount that this valve is actually going to open up. So if you have a large gap in between here, it's going to shorten the life that this valve is actually open and you're going to be getting... Um, not enough fuel into your cylinder or you're going to have remnant um, uh, exhaust fumes inside the piston after or uh, inside the cylinder after everything actually explodes. So really the four thousandths is just the right amount making sure that there's enough for this to close all the way but not so much that we're actually going to uh, shorten the life that this is open during the rotation of the motor. Now, to actually make the adjustment, we'll take our 10 millimeter wrench here and we're just going to crack this loose. Okay, so that just loosens up. And then now the, the tap it here will turn. You can see that there's a flat slot in here and that's where your flat blade screwdriver comes into play. So you take your flat blade screwdriver and you can adjust. This just screws in or out and you can see that you can change the amount of clearance that's between these two components. I'm gonna back this way out just so that you can see. You can see the amount of space that's between there now, significantly more than 4,000. So this isn't going to be able to open and close all the way like it should. And we're actually going to, you'll hear this rattling. You'll get that rattle in there, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna take your flat tip screwdriver, you wanna make your adjustment here, and then you wanna take your 4,000 feeler gauge Remember, don't get caught up in the number. It's not super important. And just get that 4,000th feeler gauge in between there. And then we're going to adjust this down so that it's just snug on the feeler gauge. This feeler gauge, when you're all done, should still be able to slide in and out of here easily. And then once you have that adjustment done correctly, you're going to lock down this lock nut right here. And you'll snug it. And then remember, after you snug it, 
that you want to go back and you want to verify your adjustment here again is correct because when you adjust this down you can actually turn the screw just a little bit so make sure that's an important step make sure that when you're all done and you have your lock nut here locked down that you go back and verify the feel here with the feeler gauge so once I've adjusted for the intake and the exhaust for number one I'm just gonna follow the table here and I'm gonna go to the other A. The other A that I see on here is for cylinder number three and that's on the exhaust. So this is number one, this is number three, this is the exhaust. So again, you can hear that rattle. Now I've already adjusted all these, but you'd wanna go here and adjust that the same way. And then over here, it tells you for number four, you wanna do the intake. So you need to come around to the other side of the motor here Number two is in the front, number four is in the rear, and the intake is on the top, and you'd want to make your adjustment here and set that for four thousandths. Once you have all four of those set and everything's locked down and you're happy with your adjustment, then you want to look at your top dead center mark and you want to rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees, which is one full turn around, and then you go back to your table over here and you'll make all the appropriate adjustments in the exact same manner working to the letters that are B. So you go to number two. Number two is over here on the front. So we would adjust intake and exhaust. We would adjust number four on the exhaust. And then again over here on number three, we would be adjusting the intake because we had already done the exhaust here and that's all here on the table um, so I hope that you guys find these videos helpful and it will give you enough courage to be able to tackle changing the timing belts and doing a simple valve adjustment on your GL 1000 motor all by yourself and you can keep that money in your pocket spending on gas and twinkly lights for riding around thanks for watching